drug manufacturers. Uh, there are a lot of things that are interconnected here. B.O.B., Jacksonville. T Tim, what do you say? Is the light getting dimmer? Uh, yes, Michael. I don't think it's just in America. I think it's the whole world. If you look around and you see the news... It used to be when you watch the news, there was something good going on somewhere, even if it was bad somewhere else. Now, everywhere, it's everything is bad. There's no good news. It's all – everything is just bad. Okay, so let's talk about bad news for a minute. Is it really bad news or that the news business is only showing bad news for ratings? Exactly right. That's all they want us to see is, is what's bad because you have to look and hunt to find good news. Well, here's some news that I put on my website. Green Beret killed in Afghanistan was a new father. There's the picture of the guy killed in Afghanistan for Obama's war holding his baby. I'm not making that news up. Or Trump spotlights Islamic rape jihad on women. He's not making it up. The Muslim invaders raped women on New Year's Eve in Germany, and their own government turned on the women. Now, it gets even better. Canadian Children's Choir sings welcome song to Muslim immigrants about the slaughter of Jews. They had a, a chorus of children in Canada singing a welcome song to Muslim migrants in Arabic, and it was about ce the celebration of the slaughter of Jews and Christians. So there is a lot of darkness in the world right now, Tim, and a large amount of it is coming from the insane liberals who have destroyed the West and are flooding the West with Muslims in particular. And be believe me, this enmity towards Muslims is directly related to terrorism. Make no mistake about it. It's not because the people are inherently racist, but they're inherently wanting to survive. And they don't know which one of them is liable to set off a suicide vest tomorrow. Now, is that irrational, or is that racism, or is that re realism? No, I think that's realism. All right, well, that's why Trump is surging. Because people are feeling it, for God's sakes. You see a woman walking around with a body covering for the 15th century, and you say to yourself, I don't know what she's going to do. I know she hates me. I know she hates the country. I know she thinks the women around her are whores, and she probably spits on them behind their back. You think people are insensitive because they're wearing a short skirt or a tight pair of pants? You think that they're lower than her because she's wearing a tent that her husband made her wear? Okay, so think about these things. It's having an effect on our society. When you see a potato face like Merkel, the East European communist, bringing in a million migrants, and they go on a rape fest in Germany over New Year's Eve, and their press covers it up, and the lunatics who work for her in the left wing say that the women got what they would deserve because they weren't dressing mod modestly. If this is going on, you think it has no effect on everybody? It does. But I don't know that it's that. I don't know. Then how about the bomb test yesterday? We forgot about it already. Looney. How about Looney, who set off the, quote, hydrogen bomb yesterday, which we talked about? Forgotten already today. It was a bomb test. It was still six kilotons. It doesn't matter to me whether it was a hydrogen bomb or not. The U.S. expressed doubts that the communist nation used the hydrogen bomb. But seismic stations registered underground tremors in North Korea uh, caused by a nuclear explosion. So what did I say yesterday? Whether it's hydrogen or atomic or anything else, the trick is to understand why they are doing it now. Why would they set off a nuclear device now, I asked. I said whether it's a hydrogen bomb or not is not the issue. The issue is what's in it for the North Koreans to even conduct the test. And I said you'd have to look to China for an answer. And you'll see that the Chinese stock market has been plummeting, and they've had to rejuggle their currency. And I said this test yesterday was to threaten America in case we're thinking about fighting back with sanctions or tariffs. And I said they're threatening us through their junkyard dog called North Korea. That's in the Savage Nation newsletter from yesterday's show. Now, you can disagree with me, but that's what I said. You know, that's how I see this whole point. You're telling me that has no effect on people? Oh, suspects, no. in, suspects in Cologne sex attacks claim to be Syrian refugees. Yesterday in Paris, the city of light, knife-wielding terrorist shot dead outside Paris police station. He shouted, Allah, Akbar! on the Charlie Hebdo attack anniversary and try to stab a cop. So they shot him dead, thank God. They gave the cops guns in Paris. Uh, finally, they're learning that they have to arm their police in, in, in France. Just as Obama wants to disarm our police, the French are learning they better arm their police if they want a country at all. 
Knife-wielding terrorists shot dead outside Paris police station. You tell me the city of light is a city of light today? Ask people who are in Paris what they feel today with their wonderful Muslim refugees marching around with their 15th century costumes spitting at them behind their backs, cursing them, spitting on the very France that gives them their welfare check. You think people haven't had enough of it? They hate it! They're eating their hearts out over it. And here's Merkel, this potato-faced anti-German maniac. She wakes up after the rape epidemic and says, we must accept migrants are more criminal after opening Germany to one million of them. We must accept migrants are more criminal? Merkel, you are the criminal. You and your communist liberal cohorts are the criminal, and you're going to be the death of the West. We don't need Otto Spengler to tell us what you're doing. You are all mentally ill, psychotic, left-wing fanatics. And I'm telling you, there needs to be a people's uprising to save the West or it's over. Look ahead and tell me that there's a West that can survive in this culture clash. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. It's all fun to listen to. But look where we are today. We opened up the doors of the West, and the barbarians have invaded. And now some of us see what's going on. Some of us see what's coming. And those who don't see it are still dancing to the devil's delight. Article on my website, Why Are British Kids So Unhappy? Two words, screen time. The telltale blue glow from under the children's bedroom door is one of parents' biggest worries. But it's not easy to take away the phones, laptops, and tablets, they say. The kids are addicted, and the addiction to these devices is probably as strong as that to drugs, since we're talking about addiction. And people are paying attention to YouTube, moronic YouTube videos the kids are watching all night long. God knows what else. With parental controls, they cannot put the tablets down. So the joy has gone out amongst the children uh, over there. But I don't know about that. I'd rather talk about adults over here. Why is the light going out here in America? We're getting great callers on that, and I'd like to have your opinion. Unfortunately, we're sold out as usual. We only have 10 open lines, and they're all taken right now. I'd like to just take the callers we have and replace them in a moment and try to get some uh, callers from areas that haven't yet gotten onto the program. So let's go to KSFO in my hometown of San Francisco. Let's go, my friend Rick. Why is there more, let us say, darkness in the world today than, it, than previous times? Well, I don't think it's you, Dr. Savage. I, I think it, it is the United States people right now, and I, and I think it has everything to do with the news that's put out by the liberal establishment. It's soul-crushing. It crushes your spirit. It's not what's going on in the world, like what you put on and the truth being seen and how you help people understand. It's more what's behind that liberal content that's actually, I feel, designed to make you feel apathetic, to make you feel useless. Mm -hmm and that you, you, you can't have an effect. And so what do people do? They look away. They don't have any, any energy left in them. But do you think it's the news media that is making up the news? They're not making up the news. I mean, you could become a Pollyanna like some suburban uh, people do and not pay any attention to the news. Would it make you happier to be an ignorant, an ignorant person? I mean, they say ignorance is bliss. Is that the solution? No, I, I think there's the right mediums to listen to. I think radio, honestly, uh, example, your show, um, which really communicates the truth and people can listen to and understand and get really both sides of things and understand things. However, most people watch NBC, ABC, CBS, all these, these television stations, and that news, quite literally, um, I, I, I honestly feel it's, it's not doctored. It's just they choose the content and how they want to present it to you, which affects you. It completely affects you. And it, what well, it does Let's look at the presidential race in America. In an age of terrorism, in an age of the Middle East exploding because of Hillary Clinton's policies, it is directly, she owns it. She owns the Middle East. She owns the blood in the streets of the Middle East. She owns it as sure as I'm sitting here. She whacked Gaddafi. She celebrated his death. Gaddafi warned the West that Islamic terror would rise if he was killed. She celebrated his death. She celebrated the Arab Spring because George Soros paid for it. People who study these things know that she did this. And here she comes out in her campaign. And what is she talking about? Global warming, feminism, stupid things like this. 
when the world is aflame. Don't you think that's depressing? I, I do. And, and I think that the media plays into it because literally that's a distraction for the rest of the world to keep them off the eyes from the tensions that are rising with Russia and China. You know, I was at my barber's today, and I was talking about what you just talked about, the H-bomb test yesterday. They looked at me like I was from another planet. They didn't oh, know- because it, it, didn't, it didn't make it to the San Francisco newspaper? What they talk about in San Francisco in the newspaper today? What was their headline about how bad PG&E is? <laughs> I don't read the San Francisco newspapers. <laughs> Stay away. They don't even report what's going on in the world. They report about nothing outside of San Francisco. A- a- unless it's part of the stupid skateboarder progressive agenda, it doesn't exist in that idiot rag. Rick, thanks for calling, but more importantly, thanks for listening on my home station of KSMO, where I began in radio. Gee, it'll be 22 years this March 22nd. Would you believe that? One night in March. One night in March. It began so long ago. Time has gone by so quickly. It's amazing to me how fast 20 years goes by. And God only knows what the world is going to look like in uh, the world uh, to come. And here we are. EastEnders actress and her sons confirmed dead. I don't know who they are. New York Post. The transgender woman is spending a small fortune to look perfect. Don't know who she is. Elisa Milano battles Wendy Williams about breastfeeding. I don't know who they are. This is the headline in in, in Murdoch's uh, newspaper. Then we go down, videos, videos. Homeless guy has an epic video. Oh, here we go. News. Man wearing fake explosive vest shot dead at Paris police station. Man. Not Muslim man. They didn't report he screamed, Alu Akbar, before he pulled out the knife and tried to kill. Man. Just a Parisian. Just an ordinary Frenchman wearing a fake explosive vest. Let's see. Affluenza jerk's mommy arrives in Texas jail to face punishment. That's as important a story, let's say, as the wholesale industrial level rape of young girls in the Middle East. No, it isn't, but this is what makes it to the newspaper called the New York Post. Oh, here's one. Women made to run gauntlet in mass sexual attack in Germany. Again, no mention of the Muslim migrants who uh, conducted this attack. Associated Press covers up who did it. An internal report of German police was writing how, had, how women had to run through mobs of drunken men. And they show the backs of the men so you don't see that they're Muslims and Africans. They want you to think it was just white Germans who conducted this string of sexual assaults. But it wasn't. It was Chancellor Merkel's immigrants who did this. She won't deport the foreigners who commit crimes. The perpetrators of the attack, according to police, were of, quote, Arab or North African origin. And the officials in Germany tell you, don't cast suspicion on migrants in general. Continue to welcome them. Just continue to welcome them. That's all. So you understand that there's insanity running through the West. You understand that Merkel and Hillary are basically sorority sisters in their worldview. And if you think what's going on in Germany is bad, it is. It is what will happen in this country if you elect the other evil twin to Merkel. But is that the reason people feel the light has gone out? Is there a spiritual reason the lights have gone out across the West? Certainly it's terrorism. I Look, if you're not feeling it, if you're not sitting with a, a slight feeling of unease about the Muslim invasion in particular, you're not alive. I'm sorry, it's real. You know it and I know it. And that's why Trump is surging. He's the only one who dared say it. Everyone knows it's so-called the, the what are the sleeping giant in the room, or however you put it, the silent gorilla. I don't know the exact phrase. The, the 300-pound gorilla in the room that no one wants to talk about. He said it because it's insanity to bring in a population amongst whom there is a an inordinate percentage of terrorists. Let's put it to you that way. And then we have to add the caveat, certainly not all Muslims are terrorists. But as any Muslim will tell you, there's an awful lot of terrorists amongst the Muslim population itself. Even Muslims who have integrated into this society will tell you that we don't want to bring them in from the Middle East. You do know that. Because it's not the same as the Muslims who came here 30 years ago. They're not all the same. The waves of immigration are totally different. The ones who are coming in here now... Many of them have been radicalized from the from the cradle. This was not so 40 years ago when there was a trickle of Muslims, but they were not the type that came here to conduct mayhem. 
They came here to lead decent lives and practice their religion. And that's why many people don't understand why.